Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you how to solve an equation where there's variables on both sides. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to distribute and combine like terms if necessary, and then solve multi-step equations like we've been doing this whole week. So go ahead and get out your binder, turn to the math section, and get ready to take some notes. Let's get started with a review of what we've done so far. So, so far we learned how to do one-step equations where there was only one thing being done to the x. There's only one variable and one operation. In this case, it was multiply. And we know that if there's a multiplication symbol here, the opposite of multiply is to divide. So we would divide both sides by that number. The two-step equations were a little more difficult. We learned we should go in reverse order of PEMDAS to solve this equation. We would draw a line on the equals, we would add the seven, we would divide by the eight, and we would follow the same process we did with the one-step equations, but now there was just multiple steps. The multi-step equations involved things like the distributive property. So sometimes we were distributing, we were dividing, we were combining like terms, doing all that on this side of the equation before we even started solving. Now today we're going to look at equations where the variables on both sides. Equations look like this. So now you can see there's more than one x. There's an x on this side of the equal sign and there's an x on this side of the equal sign. So at first this might look a little confusing, but just like we looked at, there's been the same process every time we've just been building on it. So this is just one more added step to solve equations like this. Just like the last ones, there is a process to this. So there's actually just steps you have to solve in order, almost like following a recipe that you can just go step by step to solve your equation. So step one and step two are going to be to distribute and combine like terms if necessary. So that just means do what you can do on one side of the equal sign before you do anything else. So if we look back at our equation we were just looking at, and I start just like I have in the past by drawing my line on the equals and separating my equation. And I just look at the left side. There's nothing I can distribute. There's nothing I can combine. These are not like terms. So same thing with the right side. There's nothing I can distribute, nothing I can combine. So those first two steps are just checking your equation to see, is there anything I can do right off the bat? If you can't, then we have to move on to step three. And this is the most important step, and this might be the new thing. We have to collect our variables on the same side. There's an X on both sides of the equation in our example, so we're just going to pick a side to put it on. So this is the only new step. Now that we have an equation where there's a variable on both sides, the first and most important step to solving this is going to be to pick a side to put your X's on. So you have X's over here and X's over here. We're going to pick the side with the most X's. That's going to be the easiest way to solve this. So I'm just going to pick a side. I'm going to make a little note of it in the corner. This will be my X side on, on the left because there's more X's over here. There's eight as opposed to the four. So there's more X's. I'm going to keep my X's on to the left. And that means I'm going to make all my numbers go to the right. So when I get down to the end of this equation, on the left side of my equal sign, I'll have an X equals. And on the right side, I'll have a number. So when I look at my instructions, it says distribute and combine like terms if necessary. That just means do what you can do on each side. So if you can simplify anything or make it easier, put things together that go together on each side of the equal sign, you can go ahead and do that just like we did with expressions. Then, steps three and four, put your variables on one side, put your numbers on the other. That's all that means. When it says constants, those just means numbers, and variables are our letters that stand for numbers. So pick a side for your letters and pick a side for your numbers. If you forget to do that, just remember like your mama or papa always says, you don't want your letters and numbers together in math. You need to separate them. So you need to put your letters on one side and your numbers on the other one. Then we'll solve the equation. You're gonna to wanna to use these notes and these instructions with you the whole time that you're gonna solve the rest of the problems on this page. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk through that one example problem with you on how to solve it now that we've got our variables on one side and our numbers on the other. So we have this equation. We have separated our variables on one side and our numbers on the other. And now we need to actually make that happen. We need to actually move all of our X's over here. So let's look at the equation. We want our X's on this side, and we have some X's on this side. So we need to actually move these X's off of this side over to this side. So where it says plus 4X here, this is a positive 4X, we need to get rid of all of those 4X's. So we're actually going to move the whole thing. So the way to get rid of a plus 4X is to minus the 4X. Just like we've been doing with equations, Whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you have to do to the other side. So we're going to write minus 4x right underneath of the other x's. So we're going to combine our like terms. We can't put minus 4x underneath the minus 7 because they're not like terms. So 4x minus 4x is gone. That's 0x is left. But on the left side of the equation, I have 8x's minus 4x's. 
that equals four X's, eight minus four is four. You keep the minus seven like we did, we'll keep our equal sign, and then on the right side, we have already accomplished our first tag. We wanted only numbers on the right side, and so far, I only have numbers on the right side. I only have numbers on the right, but I only wanted X's on the left. I still have some numbers over here. So what I'm gonna do is solve this two-step equation just like we have in the past. Just like we solve two-step equations, we want our numbers over here. We're gonna start with the minus seven. We get rid of a minus seven by doing the inverse operation or the opposite of the minus. So what's the opposite of a minus? Plus, so you're gonna add seven. And if you do it to the left side, you have to do it to the right side. So minus seven plus seven is gone. And over on the right side, I have 21 plus seven. I can actually do that. That equals 28. And all that's left on my left side of the equation is the four X. So this is four times X. And the way to get rid of a times is to divide. So instead of doing times four, I'm gonna do divide by four. If I do it to the left side, I have to do it to the right. So four divided by four is one X left. I've got my variable all by itself on the left side of the equation. This was my X side. So the X is all alone now on the left side. And 28 divided by four is seven. Which again checks out because I wanted just my numbers on the right side. And there is a seven all alone on the right side of the equation. So my final answer is X equals seven. I can always check it by plugging it in for the X here and the X here. And this side should equal this side. 49 on the left when I plugged it in and I got 49 on the right when I plugged it in. 49 equals 49, so I know that I'm good to go. So we have two example problems here. I want you to take a second and try each one by yourself. This is the one we just did. I'm not trying to trick you. What I want you to do now is I want you to take a blank piece of paper that's lined. I want you to write it down without looking at the work that you just did with my problem. And I want you to try it all by yourself now. So now you try it just by yourself, just like I did. When you get stuck, you can look back at the video. Press play when you're ready to check. Okay, so hopefully you did the same thing that I just did and got X equals seven for this problem. If you don't know how to do this one, you can just rewind the video and look back at that problem and me solving it. But for number two here, I'm gonna go ahead and work, work that out with you right now. So make sure you have your instructions in front of you. Make sure you have a lined piece of paper, your pen or pencils in your hand, and you're gonna follow this process step by step with me. So the very first step we do whenever we see an equation is to draw a line on the equals. So I just draw a line straight down where the equal sign is. It separates my equation. Now when I look back at my steps to solve equations with the variables on both sides sheet, I see that I should distribute and combine like terms if necessary. That means there, if there's a number on the outside of a parentheses, I need to go ahead and multiply that out. I don't see that on either side of the equation, and I look to just make sure there's no like terms. There's not, so I can move on to steps three and four, which is to pick a side, you put your variables on one side and your numbers on the other. Here's a secret. It doesn't matter which side you pick. You'll get the same answer. You can pick whatever side you want. I always like to pick the side with the most X's. So this side actually has more X's because it's got a negative two. Negative two is greater than negative 11. So I'm gonna move all of my X's over to the right. So all of the X's in my equation are gonna be on the right side. All my numbers I'm gonna put on the left side. So you pick a side for your numbers and you pick a side for your variables. Again, it doesn't matter which side you pick as long as you pick a side and commit to it. So I've decided to go where the numbers is greater and the X's are greater on the right. So now I need to move all of my X's from the left side to the right side. So I look on the left side of my equation. This is my number side and I just want numbers. This is X's, so I need to move a negative 11X. So the way to get rid of a minus 11X or a negative 11X is gonna be to add 11X. So if I do it to the left side, I have to do it to the right side. So I rewrite my, my, my plus 11x on both sides of the line. Negative 11x plus 11x cancels out. So I can just cross that out and bring down the nine. On this side, however, negative two plus 11 gives me nine x's. Remember it's a negative two plus 11. So negative two plus 11 gives me nine x's. And then I have a plus 45 I'm just gonna bring down. I always rewrite my equal sign just to make sure that this is my line where the equal sign is and my equation is always balanced. So I don't lose the equal sign. I make sure my signs are correct. And I want to get only numbers on the left and only variables on the right. 
So on the left side, I do only have a number, so I'm good. When I look on the right side, I still have some numbers with my letters. This is supposed to be the X side. There's still some numbers here. If you also just zoom out a little bit and take a step back, this is now a two-step equation, so you should know how to solve this already. But I'm going to go ahead and work it through with you. If you want to, you can pause the video now and try it by yourself. The only new step with a multi-step equation like this one is to pick a side for your variables, pick a side for your numbers, and then solve like normal. You have a two-step equation here, so we should be able to solve it like normal. So pause the video now and try it yourself, and then press play and ready to check. Okay, so you should have just tried that by yourself. Hopefully you got somewhere. This is my X side and I've got numbers over here. So I'm gonna get rid of this number first. I'll get rid of this number first because it's the farthest away from the X or because it's the last operation I would have done if I knew what X was, do you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of a plus 45 by taking the opposite operation. The opposite of a plus 45 is a minus 45. I'll do it to both sides. So 45 minus 45 is gone. But on the left side, I can actually do nine minus 45. 9 minus 45 is negative 36. So watch your signs. Remember, I'm taking a lot from a little bit. If I take 45 away from 9, I've taken away more than I had. So I'm in the negatives. Negative 36 equals 9x. Remember, this is my x side. I only want x's on this side. So I need to get rid of a times 9. So the opposite of times 9 is to divide by 9. So I divide both sides by 9. Negative 36 divided by 9 is a negative 4 because a negative divided by a positive is always negative and 36 divided by 9 is 4. And then there's only an x left on the right. So I'm done. Negative 4 equals x. I know I'm done because I only have an x on the right side and I only have a number on the left. Now that I have an x equals negative 4, I always want to plug that negative 4 back in to the original equation and check. When I plug the negative 4 in for the x here, I got 53. And when I plug in the negative 4 for the x here, I also got 53. So on both sides of the equation, 53 equals 53, I know that I am correct. So I want to give you a chance to look at these by yourself some more. So I want you to now look at these now that I've worked through two practice problems with you. I want you to try these two all by yourself. So go ahead and try these two problems completely by yourself, and then I will also walk through them with you. Press play when you're ready to check. Okay, so you guys should have just pause the video, work this problem out by yourself as much as you could, and now you're pressing play because you're ready to check it. Don't just watch me do it. You have to try this because the only way to get better at this is to practice it. So even if you just try one step and then you press play to check, at least you've tried one step by yourself. So if you haven't already, again, please pause the video and do at least one step and then press play and ready to check. Okay, so now for sure, if you're ready, I'm going to go ahead and just start by solving this out by drawing a line on my equal side. It always just separates my equation. I look back at my instructions. I want to see if there's anything I can distribute or combine. I don't see anything that I can put together on each side of the equal sign. So then I'm going to go ahead and pick a side for my numbers and pick a side for my variables. I'm going to pick the left side as my x side because there's more x's there. So there's more x's, so I'm just going to pick that side, and I'm going to pick the right side for my number side. So now... I'm going to move all of my X's from this side over to my left side. I want to just X's over here. So I need to get rid of the X's on the right side of the equation. So I'm going to move a plus 6X by doing minus 6X. I need to get rid of a positive 6X, so I'm going to take away 6X's. So if I take it away from the right side, I'm going to take it away from the left side. So 6 minus 6 is gone on this side. And on this side, I do 13 minus 6. 13 minus 6 is 7X's. And then I just bring down everything else in the problem. So if you got to this step and you did that right, go ahead and try the next step. If you haven't got that right and you just got that, go ahead and try the next step. It's a two-step equation now, so we should be able to do this. So if you haven't already, take a second, pause the video, and try this next step. Okay, so I wanted only my x's on the left side. I have 7x plus a 9. So I'm going to get rid of that number. I want to get rid of the plus 9 by taking the opposite of plus, which is minus. So I'm going to take away 9. So I do it to both sides. If I have a plus 9, minus 9, they're canceling. That's a zero pair. And on the right side, I have negative 12 plus negative 9. That is negative 21. So I have a negative 12 minus 9 or plus negative 9, and I got negative 21 with 7x's still left on the left. This is my x side, not my number side. 
So I need to get rid of the number here. So do you see how I'm constantly checking to make sure this is my number side, this is my X side? I'm always checking to make sure that I'm on the right side of the equation and making sure what am I moving? What am I trying to do here? So I need to get rid of this times seven. So I'm gonna divide by seven. If I do it to the left side, I have to do it to the right side. So X would equal negative three. So my final answer is X equals negative three. I know that I'm done because my X's are all alone on the left side and I only have a number on the right. I also wanna just double check to make sure that my equation is solved correctly by plugging in a negative three in for the X in the original equation. If I plug it in, this side should equal this side. This is problem number four, and this is gonna be the last one I do with you in this video. So please pay attention and try this one by yourself if you haven't already, and then press play when you're ready to check it. I'm gonna go ahead and draw my line on the equal sign, and then I'm gonna to check to make sure there's anything I can't distribute or combine. On the left side, these are not like terms. I cannot combine them. However, on the right side, I have a number, negative two, plus a 15. These are like terms, and I can combine them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that first. I'm gonna go ahead and do what I can do on each side. So on the right side, I can do 15 minus two. So 15 minus two is 13. So I'm just gonna rewrite this on the left side, or on the right side as eight X plus 13. You could write 13 plus eight X, it doesn't matter. So I don't have to do the same thing to the left side because that wasn't an operation that I was doing to both sides. It was just already being done to the right. So I just went ahead and did it. Now I look to make sure that there's nothing else I can do. There's not. Then I pick a side for my numbers and I pick a side for my variables. So I'm gonna have the right side be the number side because there's more numbers over here. And then the left side is gonna be the X side because there's more X's over here. So I always pick the side with the most X's, but it doesn't matter how you, how you solve this. You can pick either side and it'll work out the same way. So I'm gonna start out by moving my X's from the right to the left. So I'm just gonna move this plus eight X. I'm gonna minus eight X because it's a positive eight X's. I know that 14 minus eight is six. So I have six X's plus one equaling 13. Now I just have a two-step equation. I know that I want my numbers here on the right. So I'm gonna get rid of this plus one off of the X side. I'm gonna do that by getting rid of that. So I'm gonna do a minus one. 13 minus one is 12. And there's a six X left on the left. I know that this is six times X and I know I needed to do the opposite of times six. The opposite of times six is divide by six. I have to do the same thing to both sides and end up with X equals 12 divided by six, which is two. My final answer is two. I plug it in just to make sure that it works out to be the same answer on both sides and it does. So X equals two. So this is all that we're gonna go through together today. Um, if you're looking at number five for a challenge problem, Allie is correct, but I'm not gonna explain why. We can talk about that in class. All right guys, that's it. If you made it to the end of this video, please put your favorite book in the comments. Today we went over equations with variables on both sides. So now you should be able to distribute and combine like terms if necessary, and then just solve multi-step equations following the steps that are in your notes. So go ahead and go back to the calendar and complete any other assignments you have left for the day. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye.